Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, back with another gear review. It's been interface central around here recently, but trust me, this thing ups the game. We're going to look at the new Antelope Orion Studio. Now, first of all, 12 mic pre's. Yes, 12 mic pre's built in to a 1U rack. Very, very cool. It's also both Thunderbolt and USB giving us 32 I.O. over Thunderbolt and 24 I.O. over USB, which means it's both Windows and Mac compatible. Very, very cool. The build quality, as you would expect, is stunning. This thing's absolutely gorgeous to look at. The screen is really, really lovely. And we'll have a look up close around the front and around the back very shortly. But what makes this thing really cool is the integration between the hardware and the Orion software app for Mac or PC. Now, in here are some pretty powerful effects processors, which we can set up in the app, which means we can run with effects in real time with zero latency. Now, it's a bit of a learning curve, but once the penny drops and you hear that enormous great boom in your head, trust me, the software is incredibly powerful. You can route anything to anything else via anything else and record multiple different versions all at the same time through different effects, which are all built into the software. So it's incredibly cool. So without further ado, let's have a look up close and personal on the front panel. So here we are around the front of the Orion Studio. And on the far left, we have the power switch. And then we have our first of our four mic pre's. Now, all of the mic pre's in this baby are class A, and they're all on this Neutrik style combi jack. Now, A1, 2, 3, and 4 are also our high Z or high impedance instrument inputs. Now, we'll look at that shortly, but on the first four channels, um, A1 to 4, we can have mic, line, and instrument input. Whereas on channels 5 through 12, round the back, they are purely mic and line inputs. We then have the talkback switch, which allows us to route talkback to headphones or to the monitors. The talkback mic is actually built into the front panel, so it's worth having the front panel within easy reach. We then come to the main kind of control section of the Orion Studio. Now, again, it's worth saying that pretty much everything on the front panel can be done from the software application, but it's really nice to sometimes reach out and actually touch something real time. So we have our encoder, which doubles up as our volume control, or if I tap it, it can be our line out control, or if I tap it again, our reamp volume, and back to monitors. Gain button. I can switch between the mic gain controls and the, see the preamp settings. Headphones, I can swap between the two dedicated headphone outputs. And A and B switches between the two sets of monitor outputs. On the right hand side of the screen, I have basically my controls where I can go up and down between my input meters. Uh, I can view the three banks of four sets of preamps and see how they're set up, phantom power or uh, how the preamps are actually set. And I can see exactly what's going on, where my sync source is, what sample rate's going on, where my talkback mic is routed to. And I can also go through up to four presets. I haven't set any presets up, but I can recall those so I can have individual configurations, four different configurations set up the touch of a button. And on the far right hand side, we have HP1 and HP2. These are our headphone outputs, which we can switch between control of using the HP button, and R1 and R2. Now these are our reamp outputs. Now this is really cool. If you decide you're gonna record a clean guitar DI and commit your tone later on, maybe you haven't got the amp you'll be using or an amp you wanna use or you're hiring something in, these reamp outputs are exactly what you would use in the real world to reamp out to basically re-record or reamp your guitar. Very, very handy. I've not seen another interface with reamp outputs on it. Maybe the 11 rack, but that's more of a guitar effects processor really than a full-on, fully integrated studio interface like this is. So around the back, this thing is no slouch for connectivity. 
we have our USB and Thunderbolt inputs and the power supply connection below that. Two sets of ADAT optical, so giving us up to 16 I.O. over ADAT. We then have 25 pin D subs for our line outputs. Uh, outputs 1 through 8 on one D sub and 9 to 16 on another. Scrolling across, we have our two sets of monitor outputs on balance jacks, SPDIF I.O., word clock, and we have the other eight of our Class A mic pre's. And on the far right, we have our insert jacks for uh, mic pre's one and two on the front panel. So what you're looking at now is the Orion Studio GUI control, and it's got some really nice touches. It looks a bit of a, say, it is a bit of a learning curve, but there's some really cool stuff. Let's have a quick look around. So up here, top left, and one of my favorite features is the fact that you can power the unit down just from the control panel. I love that. Such a simple thing, but very, very cool. We then have controls to be able to switch between monitor set A and B, and a volume control for that. We can also mute them. And one of the things that Antelope are legendary for is their clocks. And they're very proud that they've got one of their top-end clocks inside the Orion Studio. Of course, if we want to change the clock source, we can do through the different ADAT sources, SPDIF, USB, Word Clock. But of course, we want to use their oven clock because they're the best ones, theoretically. We're using a sample rate of 48K. Of course, it will go all the way up to 192. If we had an external clock source, we could show that we're locked and the unit device ID. Next section down is our input section, and we have our 12 preamps, which all have phantom power. We can stereo pair, or we can phase invert. Very, very handy. If I click over here, I've got my ADAT inputs and my SPDIF inputs. Let's go back to the preamps. Obviously on channels one through four, we've got mic, line, and high impedance. Channel five, just mic and line. Now, this lower kind of two thirds of the screen is where things potentially get quite confusing. But trust me, once you get your head around it, it's very, very logical and actually quite simple. We have four main screens, routing, mixers, effects, and main meters. Now, the meters speak for themselves. These are our preamps, or it can be any of the section that we're viewing here. If we go back to routing, we have two sections, the top from and the bottom to. Now think of it like this. If we want to record from our preamps into TB record, Thunderbolt record, all we have to do is drag that down from preamp one onto Thunderbolt record one, TB record one. I can also very usefully label these and it all starts to make a bit more sense when you do when you actually do start labeling stuff now my thunderbolt playback one and two effectively outputs one and two from pro tools are going to the monitors which is kind of handy but it's also going to mixer one channel one now, these mixers are effectively my virtual mixers. Now, in this case, uh, mixer one, I'm using as my headphone send for headphones one. And I've routed that from mix one out, one and two, to headphones out, one and two. Now, in this case, I've doubled up so HP one and HP two have the same send. But I could have a completely separate setup for headphones one and headphones two. So at the moment, headphones two is being fed by mixer two. So if I flick over into mixer two, there's actually nothing set up, but you can see here all the channels I have available. Very, very clever. Now it gets really, really clever when you start to do things like want to monitor with effects or you want to route to different things so you can actually record a clean DI but not have to split the signal. The signal is being split by the software and by the hardware internally. There's no kind of Y split cables or anything like that. This thing is very, very clever. We've had a quick look at the mixers and you can see this is my monitoring setup for, I think it was the final vocal recording I did for this particular track. 
And you can see in the middle here, we have our built-in reverb. Now, Auraverb is beautiful. It is accessed via the send functions here. So you can see here that whatever I was recording on this pink channel, which I think was probably, yeah, that's AFX outputs, uh, recording straight to TB2, to Thunderbolt 2. So I'm actually routing those effects directly into the record path, which we'll come on to shortly. But you can see how it can get confusing, but you also you can see how very, very sensible it is. We like that a lot. Effects, there's some crazy stuff in here. There's some really, really nice stuff. Um, not only are there presets which we can choose from, not that many, it has to be said, but there are also some lovely effects which we can choose from. Built-in EQ, really handy. The built-in compressor. There's also guitar amp simulations. There's guitar cabinet simulations with mics, on or off axis, all the normal stuff you'd expect to be able to switch between. Plenty of mics to be able to play with. And you can have three at a time. There's also the rather beautiful pull text style EQs. Very, very cool indeed. We then have our four different presets, which we can store for immediate recall of any particular configuration we want. Now, that's not only the mixer, that's also all the effects, the reverbs, the four independent mixers, and our routing configurator. So tradition dictates that I put together a track to really put this thing through its paces. We're going to do a BB King and Gary Moore song called Since I Met You Baby. Um, we'll start off with 12 tracks of drums. Two kicks, two snares, four toms, overheads, hi-hat and ride. Okay, so that's the drums down and it's confession time. I've already recorded the bass and because there aren't any bass amp simulated models yet for the Orion Studio, I've used the Darkface amp and cab. Now they sound really, really cool for normal guitar, but I thought, hey, try it for bass and it seems to be working. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is whack some of this baby down, some guitar. And let me show you how I'm routing the guitar and the effect signal. So I'm actually using the amp sim that comes as part of the Orion Studio setup. So we're over in the Orion Studio control panel and let me show you how I've routed this so I can have a clean DI recorded but also record through the effects with next to zero latency um, and have all the loveliness of the built-in effects while I record. So um, I've plugged into preamp number one and I've set it up to be the high Z input. This is my guitar input, which is why you're seeing a little bit of flickering every so often. Now, if I drag from preamp one into TB record one, that's my, my direct DI, my clean signal. Now, what I also wanna do is drag from preamp one into AFX one. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna route from the preamp, from the high Z input, into the first effects channel. We'll come to that shortly. And then what I need to do is route out of the first effects channel and into Thunderbolt Record 2. Hence why I've got one light blue one, meaning it's the direct signal, and the affected signal coming from AFX1. Now, if I go over into effects and look at, you can see here there are 16 different effects processes I can use. But in AFX1, I've got my guitar amp set up. And in this case, I'm using the modern US. We all know what that's supposed to sound like. And I'm using the top 30 2 by 12. Let's face it, we all know what that's supposed to be. And I've got a really, really cool guitar sound. So using this method of kind of double routing, I'm able to create a clean DI signal. So if I do choose to reamp using the reamp outputs later on, I can do. 
or I can just stick with the guitar tone that I'm committing to tape, which I think is probably what I'll do because I'm that kind of guy. So let's record some guitars. <laughs> So that's the drums, the bass, and the guitars done. Very happy with those. Now we need to put some vocals down. Now again, I'm going to use the same trick. I'm going to root from the clean input and have a basically a DI or a clean vocal. But I'm also going to root via the effects so I can have some compression and some EQ in my ears, or actually I'm even going to record that as a separate track. I may choose to use it later on, I might not, but it's nice to have the option. up in the morning with an aching head I couldn't remember anything I'd said My friends told me I was getting out of line If it wasn't for you, baby, I'd be doing time Since I met you, baby You made a new man of me Since I met you, baby I'm happy as a man could be So there you go, that's all my instruments recorded Drums via the 12 mic pre's on the Orion Studio, guitar and bass using the built-in effects using the high z input, and vocals, again, using one of the mic pre's with my favorite satin mic, and I'm using some of the effects built in. I might blend these together, but you'll see exactly how I'm doing that when I play back the mix. I'm also gonna show you exactly the effects chain and all the goodies I've used to create my sound. I've also slightly cheated a little bit and added a couple of extra parts. I've added some horns from Session Horns Pro and some Hammond from DB33 just to really give it that kind of bluesy Gary Moore BB King feel. However, back to this thing. Oh my God. Awesome. And I know that's a word I use all too often, but I love this thing. Yes, it's a one new rack and everyone who knows me knows I love small is beautiful, racked up, neat, portable. I love that. Lots of IO, 12 mic pre's, and they're brilliant mic pre's. They're super clean, they're lovely. The clocking, uh, do you know what? For me, the clocking argument is still a little bit of one. Maybe it's I don't understand it enough, I don't know exactly what it's doing. However, I know it's got antelope on it, the clock sourcing and everything like that on it is gonna be absolutely second to none. So, that is why this thing is getting my editor's choice. I absolutely adore this thing. It will, it will pain me to send it back because I like this thing so much. What I really love about it the most is that amazing GUI, the amazing GUI that allows you to route anything to anything virtually. No loss of signal, no degradation, absolutely genius. The effects sound great. Short of a marriage proposal, I think I'm in love. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm going to play the whole mix back now. It's a minute and a half of um, bluesy loveliness. Hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you again soon for some more Gear Talk. <laughs> Up in the morning with an aching head I couldn't remember anything I'd said My friends told me I was getting out of line If it wasn't for you, baby, I'd be doing time